Foley reclaimed the county championship in 1950 with a 6-2-2 two two record. The team had a shutout win against Robertsdale and another shutout victory over Baymanette in the annual Armistice Day game. The Foley High Lions had an explosive first quarter here Saturday to defeat the Baymanette Tigers 14-0 in the annual Armistice Day clash. The Lions put the game away early when ace flinger James Bud Flowers connected within Larry Underwood for a 65-yard touchdown pass. The Onlooker, November 15, 1950. The Foley-Fairhope game that year, which ended in a 2020 tie, was said to be one of the best games seen in the county in the last 10 years. The 1951 team would see the Lions again post a winning record, Bud Flowers, a senior on that team, recalled an early season game against Milton, Florida. In the middle of the field, it was dirt. Yeah. They yeah. could never get grass to yeah. grow in the middle of the field. That's true. And we were playing Milton, Florida. Supposed to be a Friday night game. And uh, rain, it came a flood. So they said, well, we'll play Saturday night. So we got out there Saturday night. All day Saturday, it was just a pretty day. We got out there, lined up to kick off, and the thunder started in the west. And it came a flood. But that was the most fun I ever had. If you got ta tackled in the uh, yeah. mud, you just slide for it. <laughs> six, eight yards, you know? <laughs> and back then we had dark uniforms. And I'll never forget, Bruce Childress was one guard and uh, Billy Hall was the other guard. And they went down and were supposed to block the linebackers or, or something, I think. Well, they came back just mad at each other and just about, about to get in a fight, you know. And I asked him, I said, what's wrong? And I forget which one said it, but he said, I went down the block and he cut across and cut me down <laughs> because the uniforms were so black and dirty. They didn't, we didn't know half the time who was who. <laughs> oh, Lord. The Lions closed out the season with a 14-7 victory over Robertsdale and a close 20-19 win over a powerful Viger team from Mobile. With heavy losses to graduation, the 1952 team slipped to a 2-8 record and marked the end of Coach Meredith's eight-year tenure at the school. He finished with an overall record of 44 wins 27 losses and five ties. Foley would continue rebuilding during the 1953 season with Winton Wise as the new head coach. First year assistant coach Ivan Jones recalled an early season road trip to play St. Stanislaus, Mississippi. Uh, in 1953, we went down to play St. Stanislaus. Uh, it was in my entire coaching career, I, we were able to get Greyhound buses twice in those almost, almost 20 years of being assistant and what have you. One of them was the St. Stanislaus game, uh, the quarterback club, I think, bought the, the bus. Uh, and L.D. mentioned about getting uh, Got his lip. We had two people to get. He and Jerry Truss got sewn up, lips sewn up. Tommy Munn got a con concussion, but it was Kenny's no, team. Yeah. Uh, Kenny's team may have, uh, may have got, a, got another one. 
any, anyway, we, the bus broke down on the way back uh, somewhere, and we, uh, we didn't get back into Foley until uh, it was about daylight. And I know I took L.D. and Tommy Bunn home, and, uh, and the sun was, was, was coming up when I got back, back to where I was, uh, where I was uh, staying. And that, that was a lot. The other uh, bus, we, we played uh, W.S. Neal up in Pruden. This was 1950, no, uh, 1964, I believe. And those two, those were the, uh, of course, we could take all of them on one bus at that time. And those were the only two times that we, the rest of the time we rode that uh, yellow, yellow bus. So uh, <laughs> I think some of the present teams need to know what it is to ride a, ride a school bus. Uh, Nineteen fifty four would be a much different story as the Lions were back to their winning ways, concluding the season with a seven two and one record. The Lions would face Fairhope in the final game of the season to determine the winner of the county championship. Over sixty years later, Coach Wise and players on that team had vivid memories of the final minute of the game, which has simply come to be known as the Henry Smith punt return. Well, it was amazing because Bobby Lauder had been the fastest, best running back on the team at that time, and he had gotten knocked out in the McGill game in Mobile, and uh, we had to just fit in with the other players to because Bobby Lauder on offense took the ball out every other time, or maybe all the time. I don't, know. I don't remember how often, but. Anyway, it was up to the quarterback to call it. But uh, at the end of the ball game, we held them four downs, and they punted on the fourth down. I think it was a minute left. And uh, he was back. He fielded the ball on about the 50-yard line and went up the field in his fastest speed, just trotting. <laughs> <laughs> Pointing around and went across the goal line and Kicked extra point, 176. I want to say, I don't want to boast, but I was the last, I was that last block. I made that last block. Um, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was. Uh, Raymond Christensen was uh, right ahead of me. <laughs> Raymond didn't like to block too well, but, <laughs> but I'll tell you what he put, well, he used to have his old coat machines out on, not machines, his old boxes out there, and Raymond put one in front of that box. I'll never forget that. He just, that's the hardest thing that I ever seen over there to get, but he put it on him. Mm. Well, I had the best view. I was back in that seat that uh, right on the sideline. We were standing there, but uh, Coach Oaks took me out on those kickoffs, and I just remember him catching that ball coming up the field. Every time he would see a player coming in front of him, an opponent coming in front of him, he would point to him, and it always seemed like there was somebody right there to hit him. It was, uh, I don't know if you'd choreograph that as a dance. You couldn't have done it any better. There was somebody there every time an opponent got in his way. They have a creature that Dean picked me up and put, him, put me on there, their shoulder and carried me off the field. It's in the yearbook. That's all I want to go. Henry Smith's brother, Everett Smith, converted the PAT to give Foley a spine-tingling 7-6 victory and the county championship. In the first 31 years of football play, Foley had 13 coaches who guided the Lions to 26 winning seasons. In the next 31 years, the Lions would only have two coaches, a young man from Jackson, Alabama, and a star player that returned to his alma mater. The rest, as they say, would be Foley Lions football history.